Hi, how are you students? Uh, today I want to take you through convertible preferences, which is uh, what I've prepared as class example 6. Now, remember, I did a video for share options. Now, under diluted earnings per share, you've got three things that basically can cause a dilution. You've got share options, convertible preferentials, the one we are going to do now, and then we've got convertible debentures. Now, let me take you through this uh, uh, this one, this type, which is called convertible preferentials. Now, in this slide here, you can see that we've got 100,000 uh, ordinary shares at 100,000. So, a share is worth one rand in this case. A one ordinary share is worth one rand in this case. Then again, we've got 200,000 convertible preference shares, which are worth 200,000 in this case. So you can see also that a, a convertible preference share is one rand. Now, what do we mean when we say you've got you've got convertible preference shares? In simple terms, what it means is that you are going to take an ordinary share and forego a convertible preference share. Meaning what you are then doing, it's like replacing something. You you say to someone, I'm going to, to forego my preference shares, but I'm going to take ordinary shares. It's like replacing one with the other. You cancel preference, you take ordinary. So that is what is basically happening. You are converting something into another. Right. Now, when you go to the next slide, you can see this is basically an extract of the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Now, here, all the information is given to you. As you know that when you have to start doing your, 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 your calculation for basic earnings per share, you will use this 420 and you will use this 280. From those, you deduct the preference dividend, which is here in this case, it's 8% of this amount of 200,000. Right. So that is basically what is given to you in slide number two. Then we go to slide number three. Slide number three, you've got the additional information. But our concentration in terms of this uh, slide is here. In, that is the information that gives us uh, what is, is exactly happening with the convertible preference share. Now, you've got 8% convertible preference shares that were issued on this date, 1 January. It is very important that you look at the, the date when were these uh, convertible preference shares issued because it means they start to exist from that day. Right, they start to cause a dilution from that day. Right, now, according to this question, you are going to convert, you are going to convert uh, into ordinary shares, meaning you will cancel preference shares and take ordinary shares, if that is the situation. Now, what is then the ratio? They are saying here, you are going to get two ordinary shares for every five preference shares held. So in short, they're saying if you're holding five preference shares, sorry, five convertible preference shares, you're going to get two ordinary shares. Okay. Now, here under required, you are required to prepare and disclose basic and diluted earnings per share. Right. Disclose the two. So always stick to what we are being asked, answer what basically is required. Now you see they are saying it will be at the end of 31 December 2020. But it's very important that you look at the fact that they are saying comparatives are required. So in short, you must show us 31 December 2020 and 31 December 2019. It is very critical that you answer what you are being basically a uh, required to address. Right. Now then we start answering now. When you look at the first part, the reconciliation of basic earnings. Right. 
Now, the reconciliation of basic earnings, you'll start with the profit uh, for the year. Obviously, profit for the year is profit after tax of 420 and 280. Now, then we must deduct the preference dividend. Now, if you go back here, the preference dividend, the convertible preference uh, shares were in existence from 1 January 2018. Okay. Now, if they were in existence from that date, it means you must pay a preference dividend for 2018 in full, 2019 in full, 2020 in full. So in our example, as, as it stands now, we've got a full dividend for 2019 and a full dividend for 2020. Right. Now you go back here. You can see here, for 2019, you've got 16,000. It's even uh, denoted as number one. The calculation is provided here to show what what makes up number one. So it's 200,000 times 88% times 12 over 12. The reason why I'm saying 12 over 12 is just to show you that it, it is for the whole year, right? You are paying a dividend for the whole year of 2019. And you're also going to pay the same amount for the whole year of 2020, right? Now, students, be careful here. Let's say for an example, if these convertible preferences were issued only one July 2019, meaning they started to exist one July 2019. Obviously, this figure here cannot be 16. If it says, if the question was saying one July 2019, that figure should be eight because when you come to this calculation here, you are going to say 200,000 times 8% times 6 over 12, which means that figure becomes 8 if the issue was 1 July 2019. Okay, but now let's proceed with this one as it is. If you then go to the next part here, you are going to deal with the shares, the weighted average number of shares. You've got 100,000 weighted average number of shares throughout because there is nothing here that suggests that there were any changes to the ordinary shares so which means like ordinary shares will remain the same like here you can see it's hundred thousand so there's nothing that suggests that there were changes uh, in in ordinary shares so we go back here your calculation as it is you see that the number of shares, it's 100,000 because they're not going to change. Now then we move to calculating the basic. The basic earnings per share, you'll see that if you, you look at this part here, you'll realize that for 2020, you've got 404, which comes from here. For 2019, you've got 264 which comes from there and then you divide by the number of shares which are these ones here right then that will give us the basic earnings per share of 4.04 .04 and 2.64 right that is the first thing that you are supposed to answer in terms of this question then we proceed now we need to deal with dilution right now if you go here and you look at dilution now Let's start with the, the number of shares. Every time when you deal with a dilution, your starting point must always be the last figures that you see under basic. So these figures that you see here that I've highlighted are the last figures that you see here under basic, meaning these ones, the last figures that I see. So your starting point always are the last figures that you see under basic, right? Then we proceed. So we've got the hundred thousands, which are the starting point. Now let's then deal with the question as it stands. The question says you've got 200,000 convertible preference shares. For every five held, you get two ordinary, right? 200,000 convertible preference shares divided by five held times two. So we know that it's 80,000, right? 80,000 ordinary shares. Now, remember, these convertible preferences were issued 1 January 2018. 
So for 2018, they will cover the whole year from January to December. For 2019, they will cover the whole year. For 2020, they will cover the whole year. You will see that we are saying it's 80,000 times 12 over 12 because we are trying to demonstrate to you that it's for the whole year. And it, it gives us still 80,000. Now, this 80,000 will cause a dilution in 2019 and 2020, the same 80,000. You will see here we are saying this will apply for both 2020 and 2019, meaning the 80,000 will apply for both those, those years. Okay. Now, then we are saying here, if convertible preferences were issued on 1 January 2019, the solution will remain the same. Yes, it will remain the same because, remember, this 80,000 will cover 12 months in 2019 because it's January to December in 2019. Also, in 2020, it will still be the same January to December, so it will cover the same period, right? Now, you remember I said... What will happen if we change this figure here to 1 July 2019? If it says 1 July 2019, then that will mean that your, your convertible preferences only started to exist for six months in 2019. So meaning from July to December. So this figure here becomes 40,000 if you change this this date to 1 July 2019. This one will change to 40,000. But this one will remain as 80 because for 2020 it will cover the whole year. Right. Now, let me then uh, move to this one. Now here we are talking about the earnings. Earnings, every time again you do the same thing. The starting point is always the last figures that you see under basic, meaning here. Here, you've got this one is the last figure. This one also is the last figure. So when you start this calculation, you start with the last figures that you see under basic. Now, let's explain this thing. Um, um, my concentration is on this 216. Right. This to 16,000. Now, I will explain this thing by going back to the slide here. Now, here, let's ask ourselves a question. Why did we pay this 16,000? For an example, in 2019 and one, why did we pay this one in 2020? We paid those dividends because we have convertible preference shares. But what will happen if you convert those uh, preference shares into ordinary. When you convert, it means you'll cancel convertible preference shares, they become zero, but the number of ordinary shares will increase. So if your preference shares become zero, then you won't be paying these 16,000 now, because now there's, there, there won't be any preference shares. When you convert, there won't be any preference shares. So you will be, you'll be saving this man. Technically speaking, if you save the 16 like here in 20, 20 it means you must go back to 420 it will take you back to 420 right now this calculation here what they are saying they are saying if for an example i've got 264 as the last figure under basic if i can convert all my preference shares now i won't pay the 16,000, which means the profit for dilution i will save this 16 it takes me back to 280 Again, here is 406. I will save the 16 if I convert. It will take me back to 420. Now, let me show you that what they're saying here is that if you convert and you save the 16,000, you'll have 420 and 280. Now, if you come back to this slide here, you'll see here's 420, here's 280. It will be as if you have not made a payment because technically speaking, if you can convert, your preferences become zero, the number of ordinary goes up, right? Now, you will save these amounts, this 16,000. So that is why it takes you back to 420 and 280. These are your diluted basic earnings. Now, then you have to calculate now your basic earnings, which is this one. 
Right. It says 420 and 280, which are the two figures here. Right. And then we divide by 180. That will come from this side. Your 180s are these ones here. And effect these two. Right. You divide by them. They will give you your, your diluted here. Right. Now, let me then emphasize very important principles and what is written on to there at the top. Like, let's start from this slide here. This slide says the earnings of diluted uh, earnings per share will change by the preference dividend that will be saved if you convert preference shares to ordinary. The starting point is, is closing balances under basic earnings per share. Now, here in simple terms, they explain what I've already explained that if you convert preference shares, they will become zero and the ordinary shares will go up. So you can't pay a dividend for preference shares if uh, they don't exist anymore. That is the saving that you'll make. That is the reason why we we had uh, the 16 here. No, it's not this one. It's here. This 16 here. This 16,000. We're adding it back here and adding it back here. All right. So we were explaining what is written there at the top. Then on this next slide, if you convert preferences, you won't pay the preference dividend. The saving in this case is the whole dividend. That's what already I've already explained also. Right. Now, let's deal with this thing of dilution here again. Let's go back here. I've explained this thing under share options. I'm still going to explain it again under convertible preferences. When do we say there's a dilution? Now, we there's a dilution if, for an example, do you see in 2020 there's 2.33, 2.33 here in 2020. So if there's a dilution, this figure 2.33 must be lesser than the basic here. You see basic is 404. So obviously the, dilu the, the one under dilution is lesser than 404, 4.04, sorry. Yeah. Now there's a dilution in 2020. All right now let's check this one this 264 if the there should be a dilution in 2019 the figure that i'm going to see on the other side under dilution must be lesser than 2.64 then we can say there's a dilution now here it's 1.55 then there's a dilution because 1.55 is lesser than the figure under basic earnings right then we go here now when we're here under this slide here, we're asking a question here. We are saying, what if convertible preference shares were issued 1 April 2019? How will the solution change? Now, I've dealt with this thing when I was using an example of 1 July. So you apply the same principle. Now, let's start here. 280, then you'll minus 12. Why do we minus 12 here? Because in july your dividend can only be for nine months now here is the calculation here remember the 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 convertible preference share will only exist from one april so from april to december is nine months now you'll see it's two hundred thousand times eight percent times nine over twelve that will give you the twelve right okay that will give you the twelve here for the current year which is 2020 you'll see it says 200,000 times 8% times 12 over 12, which is this 16,000, right? Which is this 16,000. Now, always remember that in 2019, since you are paying 12,000 there, it is clear that it's for nine months. So even the number of shares that you are going to use for dilution, they must be for nine months. I will show you as we go on. All right now here remember that i always say if you start something like this calculation here under dilution if you start it it must be the last figure here you'll see here 264 sorry 268 is the last figure that is here All right then you will see then now we we'll add back the 12 to get to 80 because if you convert again preference shares they become zero you can pay a dividend, then you save that 12,000. That is why it takes you back to 280 here. It takes you back to 280, which is this figure here, 
again it says it is as if you didn't do anything right then we come to this one here 404 which is the last figure here then you save 16 if you convert for this year if you convert it will take you back to 420 now sometimes students they get confused when you say to them dilution they say what exactly is this thing if you take dilution in literal terms it means you are adding something on top of something you've got your own ordinary shares that you've issued as a company now a dilution means what if i convert how will these ordinary shares that i have change how will they change how will basically the the figures change okay now another principle that i want you guys to have is this one if you remember under share options when you calculate dilution under share options the only part that changes it is the number of shares the profit for basic and dilution and, and diluted remains the same but now when you are dealing with convertible preferences and convertible debentures changes will happen in earnings and they will also happen in a number of shares so with these two convertible preferences and, con and convertible debentures your changes will happen on both sides earnings and number of shares both must change but under share options only the number of shares will change the profit remains the same between basic and diluted okay right now let's then continue in terms of this calculation because we've already we are only showing the earnings in this slide let's go to the number of shares now here are the number of shares in relation to that question that we are saying the, this will basically be the same now look at here i'm starting i want to deal with this figure here right i want to deal with this figure of sixty thousand here is the calculation the calculation says it's 200,000 convertible preference shares five held you get two it gives you 80 but now it says 9 over 12 then it gives you 60 now remember now the question asked you what will happen if the convertible preference shares issue was on 1 April 2019 the dilution can only occur for nine months now here I've written here there is no dilution for the first three months in 2019 since convertible preferences were not issued were not in issue until uh, 1 april 2019 right so your dilution will only start from 1 april until december right so that is the reason why we've got 60,000 here right when you go to 2020 it's 80,000 times 12 over 12 for 2020 that will exist for the whole year the dilution they will cause a dilution for the whole year right then you can then calculate your basic your basic earnings uh, are given to us here in this case your your earnings will come from this side 264 and 404 right they are, they are here and then you divide by the number of shares which is 100,000 in this case they will give you 4.04 and 2.68 right and then when you go to dilution the the number of shares that you are dividing with here the 180 the 180 and the 160 and the 160 they are already covered here We've already showed you here right now the profits will come from this slide here here are these profits for dilution for 20 and 280 all right they're covered here under dilution here the 420 is this one right and the 280 is this one here sorry yeah it's this one you can see um yeah 280 here then you get your diluted uh, earnings per share now what does the rule say this one these figures that you see the 2.3 must always be lesser it must be lesser than this one then there's a dilution then this one here must be lesser 
than this one, then there's a dilution. So we can safely conclude that there is a dilution in 2019 and a 2020. Right. Now, if we then come to this last slide, which is the last slide, we are requesting you to please attempt question three, shop limited page 20 of the EPS handout. I've given you hints in terms of how you can tackle the question. I'm saying when a conversion takes place, it is like a cash issue. Now, and then we are saying that is exactly the same like class example one. And then we say, be careful of the saving in the preference dividend based on the timeline. Obviously that I've already explained. Now, let me come here so people can understand. Now, there is a difference between when we say, if you convert, and then if I say convert, if you've converted something, it means it has taken place now. A dilution is caused by the what if you convert. That causes a dilution. But once you convert, it's like a cash issue, like I've, I've highlighted that you treat it like the one in class example one. It's like issue for value, whereby you issue shares for market value. Once you convert, then it's like that. So be careful in terms of that example, that there are situations that are like that in that example. Thank you, students, for 